Hello and welcome, I'm Stormer, and uh, this is Final Fantasy XIV. Um, Square Enix, in their infinite wisdom, decided to give people four free days worth of playtime for Final Fantasy XIV. Um, and they did that, hang on, I'm just trying to see, oh, I'm supposed to go there, aren't I? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, no? Oh, there, okay. Oh no, that's not where I'm supposed to go at all. Uh, okay. I have to find a ship. Oh, that ship over there. Okay. Okay, so as I was saying, before I so really got distracted by um, whatever it was I was supposed to be doing, maybe this is the wrong ship, but we'll find out. Um, Square Enix decided to give everyone who had a Final Fantasy XIV account uh, a free four days. Um, which was nice of them, because... Uh, it's the only way I've ever played this game is actually through <laughs> free time. They've either had free weekends or free uh, X amount of time or the free months that you get when you buy the game. Um, I don't know why I've never been able to bring myself to actually buy a subscription for this game. Um, yeah, I'll talk to the young executioner here. That's a weird job title. Um, and it actually plays into something weird about this game uh, that I'll talk about. Okay, so. One thing to keep in mind with Final Fantasy XIV is that while it has cutscenes, very few of them are actually voiced, so... Uh, yes. Anyway, um... What was, I, what was I saying? That's right. Um, so yeah, I haven't actually paid for a subscription to this game. Um... But... I, um... Do enjoy it, and I'm starting to wonder whether I should actually buy a subscription. Um... Because I'm having a lot of fun playing it again, and I really, really want to get through the story. And more, more specifically, I really want to get through the Heavenswood content as well, which is apparently quite good as well. Um, but what sort of surprised me with Final Fantasy XIV is how it sort of crept up on me as being actually a legitimately great game. Um, of course, quite famously when it first came out, it had a lot of problems and was just very badly designed. It was, um, aside from all the technical issues it had, the actual, um, the way it played wasn't very interesting either. Um, and it, you know, it, uh, my understanding, and I never played it back then, but my understanding was that you had to do everything through these really complicated menu interfaces and all this kind of stuff, so, um, yeah, it got pretty weird. Um, by the way, this is me, obviously. Um, I'm a Thaumaturge, which is basically this game's fancy word for a mage. Um, the, the classes all have weird names. If you're a Final Fantasy player, you'll know what all the weird names are. Um, also, this game has some wonderfully expressive emotes and uh, character animations. Yeah, <laughs> like the shrug. <laughs> oh, I'm dancing. Okay. Because that's the thing that you do in this game. Um, you end up dancing quite a lot in this game, I've discovered. Yay, we, we danced. Um, I think this is the third time I've done a quest now that involves, like, dancing for someone. Um, I think we're actually picking up a dance here, are we? Is that the point of this? There was one earlier where we had to do that, and it was like, they're, they're, this game has dancing cat girls, um, and she wanted to learn a really special dance so she could um, socialise with, like, rich people. And we met this guy who could teach her the dance, but it turned out I was so much better at the dance that instead of being a dancer, she decided to run off and become an adventurer, like me. So, so that's the thing. Um, I actually have a higher level character than this. Um, this is like, she's like, I think, level 17 or 18 now. Um, but I have a higher level character. She's a Hyor, which is basically this game's human equivalent. Um, this cutscene's going on quite a lot longer than I anticipated it was going to go on. Um, anyway, um, obviously there's some kind of territorial dispute between two different sort of guard factions. Um, oh no, he's the captain. Okay, yep. Okay, well, I'm glad we sorted that out. But anyway, uh, yeah, th there's a bunch of different races. There's Hyo, which are basically your bog-standard sort of human race. There's an elf race that I've forgotten the name of. Um, there's the really big guys, like these guys, um, who I've also forgotten the name of. There's the Lala Fell, who are like adorable, really short, human-type, humanoid-type people. Um, and there's the Makot, who are basically cat people. Um, like, this is a Makot here. That one there. In fact, that's a Lalafell there, and that's my coat there, so... And I think the guy there might have been the elf race that I've forgotten the name of. They're basically elves, but I cannot for the life remember the name. There's like two races. There's them and the big guys who also like, oh... 
Okay, so now I have to go back to wherever it was I had to go back to. Um, if we just jump down here, we can get off the ship this way. This being a Final Fantasy game, um, ships and vehicles are not always very efficiently designed. They tend to be designed for looks than anything else. So, um, what do I love about this game? Well, for a start, it looks pretty great. Like, the world design in Final Fantasy XIV is really good. Um, we're in a place called... Uh, Oh god, it, I, I just realised I'm going to have to pronounce the name of this place, and it's the stupidest name. It is called Limsa Luminza. Um, so we're in a place called Limsa Luminza, and, um, yeah. It's basically a big city on the sea, as you can see. If I just slowly pan my way around, um, you can see it's like a big city. It has multiple levels. Um, there's two other main cities in this part of the game. I, I don't know if Heavenswood adds more. I don't have Heavenswood, so I don't know uh, what it adds to the game. Anyway, oh, and before we do it, this is the stupidest thing in this game. So when you turn in a quest, if you have a key item to turn in. What you have to do is you have to put in this and then click this. So do this, then that. For some reason, you have to do that whenever you hand stuff in. I, I don't understand why the game does that, but it does, and it's yeah annoying. Anyway, uh, we've picked up a dance. Yay. Yay for us. We've learned the emote step dance. There are a lot of emotes in this game. Um, and in fact, I can actually bring up a, uh, where is it? Social. A list of all the emotes. <laughs> and just clicking on one of these will actually do it. And there's some really funny ones too. Um, like obviously the dance. Um, but yes, you have like a happy emote. Hang on, let me. There we go. See? Oh, and the other thing this game has is old spam out the wazoo. It's probably the most annoying thing in this game is that there doesn't appear to be any sort of attempt at actively blocking. You can't even really... Like, I can blacklist the spam bots. Ah, oh, sweet new crazy cheeks. I remember doing this quest, but it's a level 1 quest. I don't want to do it right now. It's a really funny quest, that one, because these guys... Um, like Sweet Nick's Rosie chicks here, they're goblins, and they walk around these adorable masks and stuff like that. I'm sure they're hideous under the mask, but they walk around these adorable masks. Um, what am I looking for? I need to go back to the Drowning Wench, which is up here. The Drowning Wench is the name of the pub. Um, yeah, okay, so, we're going up. The, the cities usually have multiple uh, directions. I wonder if... No. I'm just avoiding low levels, so I don't need to. I've got a free company invite at some point there. We're going to ignore that. Um, I didn't even notice it. Oh, where's the drowning winch? It's over there, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so... The other thing I really like about this game, you probably noticed it now because it's raining, um, is it has really nice weather. Um, so this rain effect looks really cool. It also has a really fast day-night cycle. You can see this uh, sun icon around the clock. That just loops around basically a 12-hour cycle. So we're at about 6pm, or getting on for 6pm, which means night time now. And... Um, then it'll go through and it'll get a day cycle once that's done. We need to go over here and talk to Batoran. And, uh... This is the main story quest we're doing here, so... There'll probably be a little bit of early spoilers. But, eh. Nothing too serious. I don't think this this is going to be voiced either, so... Yep. So... Um... If, if you actually want to read what's going on, um, I'll leave it up for a little while, but, uh... Feel free to pause. Yes, we've just been to Sestasha. That's what I did last night. Um, Sestasha is an instance dungeon. It's probably the first one you'll do as you level up. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, the instance dungeons are actually quite good. I mean, they're not they're not as sort of, I guess, complex as the ones in World of Warcraft or... Um, well, yeah, the ones in World of Warcraft. But um, that doesn't make them any less fun. Um, I've never had trouble going through them. Um, and usually the game has a duty finder, which is basically like uh, World of Warcraft's looking for dungeon uh, feature. Um, in this game it's called a duty for various reasons. This game has weird names for stuff that other games just use normal words for. Um, for example, in this game, uh, distance is measured in uh, yams and moms and I, I don't it's Final Fantasy it's like it's like how gold is called gill in Final Fantasy games you know and this game does the same thing as well um, so there's all these slightly weirdly not correct names um, the, the, this race everyone has names like this like Dolorous Bear or um, I think there's one in Uldar called uh, Crafty 
at something. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, they're all happy about us having gone through Sasasha um, and saved this from the pirates and revealed the next part of the game's overarching plot. Um, I think this is the part where we have to choose which free company we're going to join. Um, uh, free company, grand company that we're going to join. There are three, and they're basically like the game's major factions. Um, yes, with all my limbs. Yes, so. So that's cool. Um, fishbacks. Yes, that's right, yes, that's what we fought in Sestasha. Um, so. Yes, it is. Um, on behalf of Limsa, they... Thank you, yep. Okay. I think it's pronounced Limsa or Limsa. It seems like how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, I don't think I've actually heard it pronounced in the game. And because I run with the Japanese audio, because the English... Th this game does have audio and you can switch between Japanese and English. The Japanese audio... I found the English dub to be a bit... Bad. Um, so I'm running with the Japanese audio, as as you should with a game like this, surely. Um, but we'll see how we go. Uh, okay. Oh, and I'm wearing adorable glasses. And by the way, those glasses actually stats. They're actually part of my gear. Oh, cool. We unlocked the party finder. Um, and Bataron's got another quest for us, so we'll go talk to him again. Information on a new task. So. Oh, we're going to have to head off to Gridania. Cool. Um. Yep. So. So, yes, we're going to head off to Gridania. And, uh, what was I doing? Sorry, I've just, uh, received a text message that I apparently have to respond to right now, so... That's, uh... There we go. Okay, that's that done. Okay, so let's head off to Gridania, which means finding the lift attendant around here. There, that's what I'm looking for. Um... Oh, we got to speak to Mjorn. Oh, cool, we'll get to meet Mjorn. Okay, let's, uh, go up to Mjorn. 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 I, d I don't know exactly how to pronounce that name, but you, we'll get to see it. Um, depending on what class you take, you have a different starting area. There are three starting areas which are tied to the three sort of main factions. Um, and with this class, because I'm a Thaumaturge, I started in Uldar, which is a uh, sort of desert area. Gridania, on the other hand, is forests. Um, so we'll travel to Gridania, and uh, we'll get to see the awesome... Uh, awesome cut cutscene. Happening here. Um, as the way it plays, like in combat and stuff, I'm not sure how much combat we're going to get time for in this video because I'm just kind of wandering around at the moment. Um, but the combat, I, I've made two characters so far, and one is an archer and one is this uh, thaumaturge. The archer is really interesting um, and really fun. Um, but one thing I find with the Archer, the way the combat works, I find it really slow. In fact, it's one thing I find with combat in this game in general, is that it feels slower than the combat in World of Warcraft. Um, and World of Warcraft is the game I'm directly comparing this to for a couple of reasons. Um, there we go. Dramatically walking off. Wow. We are so freaking cool. That's one thing this game has, is it is impossible to make a character who doesn't look... Well, who, who for a start, doesn't look pretty. Like, you cannot make an ugly character in this game. It is just not possible. Um, but the other thing you can't do in this game is you you can't make a character that doesn't somehow look cool. Look how cool we are. We've got glasses, we've got the really cool blouse, the legs. We are absolutely rocking it. Okay, let's talk to Mother Mion. Mion? Mion? Michon? I don't know. Um... Anyway, um, as I was saying, starting areas, yes. So I started in Uldar with this character. Um, I, I'm not sure what class you need to be to start in Limsa Limsa, but my archer 
started. Oh, I got another free company. Everyone's giving me free company invites. That, that's weird. Um, they're basically like guilds, um, but I don't wish to join any, so we're just going to ignore them. Um, anyway, uh, so what was I saying? That's right. Um, my arch has started in this area, which is Gordania, and Mother Mion actually was an important character early on in her starting story. Um, interesting, the starting stories are similar to each other, but they, they sort of, they're similar, but they take place in different areas, but they're not that similar. I'm just seeing uh, if any of these are worth uh, equipping. Uh, I don't think those are. I think I've got, I think that's exactly the item I'm wearing, so I'm probably going to take, if, if you can't have any of these, the game usually offers up, like, these pieces that you can then sell to a vendor for lots of gold, so. So that's really nifty. Um, as we go into a cutscene, not a voiced one. Mother Mion does have a voice though, there are some voice cutscenes involving her. Um, okay, so what are we doing? Um, someone else has walked in? Ah, the Bow Lord. Oh, he's the head of the Archer's Guild, isn't he? I'm pretty sure I've dealt with him as my Archer. Uh, one really cool thing about, yeah, he is, he's a member of the Archer's Guild. Um, Yes. Oh, no. No, wait. He's the guard. You you talk to him. Yeah, okay. The, he's not the Archer's Guild. Um, anyway, as I was saying... Oh, the ta oh the Tam Tower of Deepcroft. I guess that's where I've got to go next. Um, that's also a dungeon, as I recall. So... Yes, so I, I, I think I'm up to the part of the story quest where I actually... There's like two or three dungeons in a row that we've got to go to. Um, I'm slightly annoyed that I haven't met, um, there's a group of characters that I encountered on my archer that I haven't encountered here yet with this character, and I, I think I'm high enough level now that I should have, but the story hasn't taken me that way, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, the calamity that he just referred to there, by the way, is an interesting aspect of the story, because it actually, you probably know that this is Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, or at least now it's Final Fantasy XIV, Heavenswood, but we'll, we'll call it A Realm Reborn. Um, and that's because there was, of course, the original Final Fantasy XIV that was so bad, they effectively got rid of it and started again. Um, and that's what A Realm Reborn was, and in fact, they worked that into the story of the game. So the Calamity basically destroyed the original world, remade it, this is the current world, and stuff. It's Final Fantasy, it doesn't need to make a lot of sense. May the Crystal guide us and keep us. Okay. Awesome. So that's that done. Okay. Um... So I guess I have to go to the entrance of the Tam Tower Deep Croft, which is great, but um, the problem with that is it's a dungeon. I don't really want to do a dungeon for the purpose of this video, but we'll work our way through. Um, oh, one other cool thing with this game is it has dynamic shadows on a lot of things, which is just like, it's something you don't see in a lot of video games. Even video games with far better graphics than this don't do dynamic shadows the way this game does. In fact, the lighting in this game, like, everything is dynamically lit. The day-night cycle is done through dynamic lighting and all this kind of stuff, which is why the game can get away with the day-night cycle the way it does. Um, as we go, we are in central Gradania now, aren't we? Yep. I, I know roughly where to go. This is actually an area I'm much more familiar with than most of the other areas of the game. Um, but we'll head around this way. We'll get to see some cool stuff as we go through the forest. You can see how nice and dark it is here, actually, as we go through this night cycle. Um, the sunrises and sunsets are very, very pretty um, in this game. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, they're all low-level quests, aren't they? Uh, not not that low, but low enough that they're probably not worth it for me to do. Uh, I'll head around. There's a big sort of settlement. Yeah, you can see in the distance. You can see that sort of blue crystal thing in the distance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? Oh, I leveled up. Wait, I... Discovery XP. <laughs> the best way to level up. I don't have my Chocobo mount yet. Okay, so, okay, so let's get let's get into combat. You might know some rocket shield. shield. That's just because I'm low level and it yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense at this level. Um, okay, so combat for uh, Fallen Turns is really interesting. Basically, it's based on a casting system where you build this buff, which is called Astral Fire, and it increases the amount of damage my fire spells do, but makes them cost more uh, magic, or MP, which is this one here. Um, and was uh, where were I going? I was going that way? Yeah, I think I was going this way. Um, but, on the other hand, um, 
I also have uh, ice spells, and they give me a thing called Umbral Ice. Umbral Ice increases the potency of ice spells, um, just as Astral Fire increases the potency of fire spells, and increases their cost, but it also dramatically increases your mana regeneration. The idea basically is to switch between the two. So you, you use your main damage spells are your fire spells, and you use them to like do most of your damage, and then when you're low on mana, you switch over to ice, regenerate your mana, and then switch back to fire. And you do this using this ability, Transpose, which switches between Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Um, it's a surprisingly fun uh, ability, and the thing I've discovered is that I barely use spells other than these. Like, I have this version of Fire, Fire 2, which is an AoE version of Fire that does less damage, I think. Um, yeah, it does less damage, but um, hits as an AoE, so it's a bit more powerful. Let's see if this is a quest worth doing. We need to go to that place, I know, but I just want to see what level it's... Uh, level 10. Yeah, it's, not, it's almost not worth it. Um, because we are in an area that's basically a starting area for certain classes. Like I say, my archer started in Gridania. Um, and yes, my archer is a coat because everybody in this game plays catgirl archers, I've discovered. Um, except me, apparently, because I'm playing a Thaumaturge right now, but no, that's not true. There are others. In fact, I, I suppose, like, the, the opportunity to play as a catgirl is really cool. Um, and my understanding is in the original version of a realm of Final Fantasy XIV, um, the Makote race only had female options, and there was another race that was male only, but they've changed that for this so that both those races have, um, both, well, have two gender options, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, why not? Oh good, it's sending us to the Tamtara Deepcroft. Cool. Because that's where we need to go anyway, so... It's just down around here, actually. Yeah. I think we're going the right way. That's right, it's this way, isn't it? Yeah. I remember where it is. It's kind of hard to tell because it's dark, too. Um, the night setting makes it a little bit trickier as well, so... But, uh, there's not a lot I can do about the night. I would have preferred to do all this in the day, especially this forest, because it looks great in day, but it looks nice at night. You can see it looks dark and foresty um, and all that good stuff. There we are, that's Balar there, so I'll talk to him. Um, see what he wants. Yep, I'm after a bit of work. Okay, so what we need to do is go uh, over this way from memory. Try to avoid that diamite if I can. Yeah, that's where you need to go, those uh, purple areas there. Um, this game, the quests in this game, like, they're pretty standard sort of MMO, you know, collect 20 bear asses type quests, but um, they're done well. You know, like, I, I don't get bored with questing in this game. An eerie light catches our eye. What's that? That's that thing there. Lowering Glowfly. That's, uh, that's yeah. It's not hard at all. Oh, hang on, we're getting attacked by um, you probably noticed that sight line that appeared um, fixated on us. That's sort of a holdover, I think, for Final Fantasy XII is the first game to do that. And it's really handy in this game because it lets you know that you're under attack uh, in a really nice, easy to notice visual kind of way. And usually the music will kick in too, so we'll have to use that. So cast on that. And that does that. First barrow done. Where's the second barrow? Is that? Why am I? Uh, okay. Um. Oh, okay. So, is it up here? Is it? Oh, cool. Okay. So, this one didn't have the purple circle surrounding it, which makes me think I can just get away with doing this. So that's handy. Because it means I didn't have to fight. That one does. That one doesn't. I'm not sure this one does either. But we might have to fight that Diamite as we get up here. Diamite, of course, being a fancy name for Giant Freaking Scorpion. Because it's Final Fantasy and everything has to have its own name. Yeah, we're going to fight that Diamite. Okay, I'll take this guy down. And then we'll do it. You're not really seeing all the uses of wizard combat here. Or formative combat here. Mostly just because I... 
too high level for this. And I only really took this off because I wanted something to do while I came here. Okay, that looks cool. So I'll cast that. And that's that all done. So I should be able to head back to Belar. And then we'll head down into the barrow. I think... Yeah, I think I just have to talk to, talk to the guy at the entrance. Um, I mean, I'll probably have to go in to like continue the quest beyond that, but I just need to talk to the guy at the entrance for the moment. Um, so, come around here. Bent Branch. Bellar. One cool thing with this game too is it has a really nice character creation screen that lets you see your character in a variety of sort of different environments. So you can see what you look like in different parts of the game. Whereas a lot of character creators I've done recently light the character completely differently to how they'll actually appear in the game. Um, not to name any specific games Dragon Age Inquisition, but it is kind of annoying when uh, games do that. So. so. But yes, let's head down here, and uh, should be someone inside here. I have a feeling, actually, that this quest doesn't involve me. Whoop. There he is. Oh, maybe this quest does involve me going inside the Tamtara Deep Croft. I'm not sure it did, but maybe it does. Well, we're about to find out. Um... Ah. Oh, so this is all relating to... Basically, there's an evil cult that's trying to bring back the evil demon that tried to destroy the world. That evil demon, if you're a Final Fantasy nerd, by the way, was Bahamut. So, is that how you pronounce it? Bahamut? 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 I don't know. The point is, um, that's who it was. Okay, uh, which basically means that my next thing I need to do... I can't really do it. Um, is... Oh, hello. Oops. Magic bones! Um, is into the Tantara Deep Cop. Now, I can't really do that, so I'm going to go around somewhere else a little bit. I'll just have a bit of wander. There's a couple places I want to show. Oh, we get two Astral Fires now. Oh, that's new. Oh, oh, right. That was my level 20. Thing. So I wonder what that means. Um, what I get from having two. So that's what I got for leveling up. So, what does two asteroids I guess it makes my spells possible and do way more damage. I don't know, that's, that's nifty. Okay, so if I do that, what I end up getting is, yeah, you can see I get the, um, the Umbel Ice. So, that's how that works. Um, and the cool part of that is that when you do that transition, it actually resets the counter on the uh, buff. Which means, generally, that you can, uh, uh, prolong the buff. So if you finish combat and you're running towards a new monster and it's about to run out, you just uh, transpose and start with whatever you get. Uh, I want to go around here because there's a really cool area around here that looks really nice. Um, obviously at some point I'm going to have to do that dungeon. Uh, hang on, there was a quest there. We'll go pick that quest up because maybe it's good. Maybe it's cool. Um, you can see the way the light comes through the trees and everything in this game. It's really good. Um, Overall, like I say, this game, I wasn't a big fan of it at first. I sort of thought, yeah, it's nice, but it's no, you know, World of Warcraft. But every time I come back to play it, I find myself more and more, I guess, addicted to it. To the point now where I'm seriously considering actually taking out a subscription, at least for a little while, and playing it seriously um, as sort of my MMO to play. Um, in which case, it's basically replacing Elder Scrolls Online for me. Um, not that Elder Scrolls Online needed replacing. Uh, Sprinkle ale near the moist depression to fleet the... What is that? Saprophagus slugs? Okay. That's obviously down this way. Oh, I know where this is. I've done this quest before. Again, it's a bit of a lobby quest, but... Uh, seeing as I'm just trying to show... What, whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? Oh, there's a person on a mount. Um, was a big, scary mount. Okay, it looks like we have to keep going this way. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep playing so that the sun comes up, because I want to see... I, I want you to all see... Um, how cool the daylight is in this area. I mean, the daylight's cool everywhere, but... Um, the other thing about the uh, night, actually, is you don't get music at night. Um, which is a bit weird, but that's just how the game works. So, anyway, moist depression, that's what we're looking for. Oh, these enemies won't attack me. You can tell whether an enemy has attacked you based by this little symbol next to its name. Um, I can't see any enemies with the other version. There's like a red and yellow one 
that indicates that an enemy is um, hostile rather than neutral. It's basically the equivalent of a yellow nameplate in uh, World of Warcraft. Um, squelching sound. Yeah, you can see it there. That's the hostile. This guy is going to go down. Also, enemies have uh, towers. Oh, did I not kill that one? Whoa, what happened there? I don't know. Take it. Why are you not dying, damn it? Right, okay. For some reason that guy took a long time to die. I'm not really sure why that was. Oh, I've got another guy here. Um, one of the really interesting things with that is that... Um, Depending on, there are certain times when you're not going to be able to. Oh, I, I must have actually hit this thing, which I didn't mean to do. But we'll take it out now. Um, when you're doing quest and it spawns quest monsters, a lot of the time you won't be able to. If someone else is doing the quest and they spawn quest monsters, you won't be able to help them. Um, the game will actually tell you that you can't target that enemy because it's part of another player's quest. Um, not for everything, but it is something that happens occasionally. So this one use that and uh, pull it out squelching sound okay I could AOE these guys down but it's easy to use this way besides my AOE fire spell it's just it's not as strong so I don't do much damage And this guy, not that hard. Oh, oh, hang on. There we go. Th that's the tra transition. Why can't I? I still didn't have enough MP. That's how it's gonna be. Alright, okay. Um, something down there. Oh, I, yeah, Soul Bond. Soul Bond is this weird thing this game has where when you get gear, you need to Soul Bond it so you can do something with it. There's like, oh, this game has Materia, and Materia is a thing you put into gear and it does things. It enhances your gear. It's basically gems is what it is. If you're familiar with uh, gems in like Diablo or WoW or any other MMO that has gems, this game has them as well. Um, it's basically, I think it's actually the enchanting system in this game. So, I haven't really explored it because I haven't actually played. I don't have an in game character. I think my highest character is 35, 36. So. But yeah, something like that. Yep. Okay, you're down. It's all good. Right, we've completed that. One other thing this game has that you might have noticed as we've been doing this is the quest tracking in this game is really nice. Um, it basically all happens automatically, um, and you generally always know uh, what to do, and you can always click on this to bring up the quest, and that'll show you where the map is for that particular quest, and a bunch of other stuff. So, it's, it's a really nice quest tracking system this game has. I really, really like it. I also like the fact that you need to kill enemies for quest items. They are guaranteed to drop off every enemy you need to kill, and they automatically loot. Um, yeah, okay, so FATE is, um, it's actually meant to be an acronym, but basically it's like a sort of uh, open event in the world that you can go in and participate in. Um, this one, we're too high level, so if we sink our level, we, we're now level 16, um, which I think means that we're limited in our spells too. And basically what we've got to do is uh, clear things to go away. If you're familiar with the way uh, questing works in Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2, um, it's, fates are not unlike that. Um, so we're just going to take another one of the most important part of the fate act. If, if it's a fate where you've got to kill a certain number of enemies, um, usually the enemies are flagged, you can see it on this, this dead one here, the enemies are flagged for that one. So that's right. Yeah. Everyone's killing it. Everyone's just gone nuts and killed everything. Careful. Yeah, sure. I can't even. Nothing's living long enough for me to really cut out. That's a right there. Let's take it back to that one. We got it. Cool. But because I'm level synced, all my spells that I have that are higher level than that, like the uh, uh, Astral Fire 2, for example, 
I no longer have access to. Um, in fact, I don't have access to uh, my AoE fire either. But that's kind of how level syncing works, and it actually works in dungeons as well. Um, if you use Duty Finder to find a dungeon, it will sync your level to that dungeon, um, just so that you don't have to, um, you won't ever be overpowered for it. Um, you can, I think, still be overpowered if you, like, in a party and stuff. You sort of miss it. The way I'm supposed to use my magic here. But, it's not important. These guys are down as we can. We'll get XP for this, so it's quite a bit. Um, and we'll get decent XP for it. We sync our level. We end up actually getting really good XP. Which is nice. Um, it means that it means that these kind of events are always worth it. Yeah, so there we go. We got 2100 XP. Which is decent. Um, you know, not massive amounts, but it's decent. So, yeah, we'll talk to Finia. Yep. I do. Ah. Okay, what do we want? Do we want pearl chocolate? Or do I just want... I might just get the um, gold here. So we got the gold. Um, okay, so after all that, my plan was to actually go this way. Um, and I was going to show an area that's over here. So I'll just jump down there. Um, I have chosen to hide my weapon and my um, stuff. Oh, it's one of the fat baby chocobos. Look at it. How adorable are they? Look at waddle. Waddling. Waddling away. Oh, there's quests over here too. This is what I was looking for. It's this area here. just wanted to know what level these quests are. Yeah, they're not really high enough. I know I've been doing level quests that are about that high, but... Uh, yeah, I'm done with quests. Um, oh yeah, this this will lead us to... Uh, if we go, I think from here there's a guy we can talk to and he takes us off to the area, player housing area for Grenania. Um, this game has player housing. Um, it's basically instant zones. Um, I think you need to be a member of a guild to get one and you need to be level 50 and you need to have a lot of gold or gil, because that's what it's called in this game. Um, but yeah, what I was going to show was this beautiful, gorgeous lake, which you can't really see because it's night time, but, uh, trust me, it, there's a beautiful, gorgeous lake here. Um, it looks really cool. Um, it especially looks really cool when the sun comes up, but we're not going to hang around that long. Um, in fact, we're probably not going to hang around too much longer at all. Um, I'm not going to show the dungeon just because it might take, like, an hour just to get a group for it, um, because... I guess most players of this game are in, like, the Heavenswood content now, rather than the regular content. Um, so, I found that it can take, like, half an hour just to get a dungeon, but also I'm low level too, so... Probably doesn't help all that much. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's kind of Final Fantasy XIV, and... Like I said, I, I've really been getting into this game again, um, since I took my four free days, um, which Square Enix said would be up to 96 hours, but it turns out what they actually meant was that you would have four days of playtime. Not four days worth of playtime, but you would just have, like, four days starting from the moment you logged in, and, uh, yeah. But, yeah, um, so Final Fantasy XIV, I think, is a pretty cool game. Um, it looks great, um, especially given that it's pretty old, uh, graphics engine, it's not a modern graphics engine, but they've done some really nice things, good art direction has helped a lot, I think, and this game certainly has good art, art direction, look at that gorgeous moonlight that we're standing under, in fact, will that be the blue light from that crystal, well, whatever, yeah, I think part of it's the blue light from that crystal, but, oh, jeez, it looks so good, they look really cool, don't they, especially with my adorable glasses, and as I said, th those are, those are statted, like, yeah, th these are my brass spectacles, they actually have stats, so, um, but yeah, my, my gear's not great. I'm just, I'm still like level 20, so I'm not expected to have good gear yet. Um, but I'll get there eventually. So yeah, that's uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I think it's really good. I'm probably going to pick up a new subscription for it at some point soon because I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, and I can see it being quite a fun game. I think that if it's a game you've been on the fence about, um, then you're sort of thinking, eh, well, I, I suppose the answer to that question is, 
are you subscribing to any other MMO right now? Do you wish to subscribe to an MMO? Um, and if the answer to both those questions is yes, then yeah, go get Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I probably actually like this game slightly more than I like Elder Scrolls Online, which I think is one of the best MMOs around. And I'm actually playing it again right now. I feel like this might actually be a better game than Elder Scrolls Online, just because it's doing a lot more interesting things. The other thing with Final Fantasy XIV is that it actually has a massive player base. It is, I believe, the second most popular uh, MMO in the world right now. Um, or at least second most popular subscription MMO in the world right now, because remember, it is not a free-to-play game. Um, as someone who thinks that MMOs should probably have free-to-play style business models, um, like good free-to-play style mi business models, that is, not pay-to-win stuff, um, I still feel that there is a place for a good subscription MMO. Um, and I think World of Warcraft for a long time has held that niche um, pretty well, especially as it's become a niche now. Um, with Elder Scrolls Online abandoning subscriptions and various other games either being free to play or just pay to uh, own type setups uh, like Guild Wars 2 and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that there is a market for at least a handful of subscription based MMOs and I think right now this may actually be the best one you can get. Um, I haven't tried the Heavenswood content yet um, and while this game does have some quirks I still feel the combat could be refined a little bit. Um, I just think that yeah, there's a, this game has a lot going for it. I think its strongest aspect is the story um, and the way it makes you feel like what you're doing in the world matters um, much more than uh, World of Warcraft definitely does. Um, much more actually than even Elder Scrolls Online does. Like Elder Scrolls Online is very good at making you feel like what you're doing matters, but it doesn't have a lot of, shall we say, memorable characters. Let's uh, repair our gear doesn't have a lot of uh, memorable characters or interesting sort of um, stuff happening in it that really grabs your attention. Um, whereas this game has memorable characters, it has a lot of cutscenes that really play out in quite a cool way. Um, it's an incredibly, uh, I was going to say incredibly well designed game in terms of its setting. Um, and certainly in terms of the zones, the zones look so good. We're starting to see the sunrise now, but it's cloudy, so it's going to stay dark for a little while. The zones in this game just look so good. Um, I've spent way too long here. I was going to... What I should have done was run back to uh, the uh, city. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, the zones look really cool. Um, everything about this game, I think, is just really strong and really well designed. And given the state it was in when it first launched, um, I think it's really impressive that Square Enix have been able to turn this game around like they have. Um, you know, it's it's a game that um, needed a lot of work to make playable, pretty much. Like, not even fun, just playable. But not only have they done that, they've managed to make it a really fun game as well. We're going to head back up to uh, Gradania and then we're going to call it a video. Um, I shouldn't have just spent all that time just dancing around that city, but oh well. Um, we'll kill this guy mine too. Um, I feel that the combat is probably not quite as refined as it is in World of Warcraft. It, to me it feels a little um, slow, like... Um, it's actually funny actually, because I found combat with the Thaumaturge much better than combat with the Archer. The Archer tends to wait a lot on cooldowns. Um, and I, I found Archer combat really slow, like you're always waiting for these cooldowns or you're trying to keep these debuffs up various other things like that. You try, you're trying to wait for a certain buff to come up and all this kind of stuff and it took me a long time to really get my head around how archers handled um, whereas it's taken me a lot less time to get my head around how thaumaturges handle um, and I understood how this this character handled from pretty much the start. Um, so I don't know, like I mean I've got both as an option. I, I really should try a melee class. Um, there's a couple of different ones. Uh, I think I'll probably try, uh, I believe it's called a pugilist, uh, which is basically a rogue type class. There's also, uh, I think it's Gladiator, which is like a more warrior style tank type class. Um, but I haven't decided what to do with regards to that yet. Um, I'm sure I'll get there eventually though. So, oh, look at this. Look at this view. It's such a pretty game. It really is. Um, although, that said, it does have this odd thing where it does seem to suffer a little bit from... Uh, distance aliasing, like, um, even with anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing turn-on, you do get, um, 
a lot of shimmering in the middle middle distance when you're running along and it's something you notice you probably haven't noticed it so much in this video because I mean playing at night where it's not as visible visible but during the day it can be really odd and unusual oh, it's such a good looking game anyway uh, that's enough I, I'm not gonna go on like a Bajo style uh, graphics rant because um, I don't need to uh, you just need to know that this is a really really nice game it's really fun the Sun's coming up um, if you want to play a subscription-based MMO right now, and you're deciding between this and World of Warcraft, all I can say to you right now is that I would actually buy this instead of World of Warcraft. Um, that's not to say World of Warcraft's a bad game, and you're certainly going to have a good time playing World of Warcraft. But I think if you want a game where you feel like everything you do matters, and where you feel like... Um, see the lights have gone out the window? Where you feel like your character is important to the world, and where the world is actually really lively and full of things to do um, this is actually probably a better option um, especially because it's not full of expansion packs like World of Warcraft is now where there's like a million different places you need to go um, all the time this game is much tighter um, it feels big don't don't get me wrong it do, it's not a small game every zone every zone is actually interesting because they're very large zones but you only do small portions of them at a time and there's different parts of each zone have different levels so you come back to a zone later on and stuff like that which I think is really cool um, as well so every zone has multiple areas that you'll find as you keep going around it like this this area that we're in now the, the Black Forest area not, not where I was now but the area I was in before actually has a whole section um, that's like open fields that you don't get to see until later on so so yeah um, Final Fantasy 14 if you want to play a subscription based MMO right now this is the best one you can probably buy, I think. Um, yeah, that's what I reckon. So uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.